Ooh, I'm about to make my shot. I'm wide open right now. All right, let's go. No, it's going to hit the guy. No, I don't want it to hit the guy. Go in the goal. Go in the goal. In the goal. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, go in. Go in. There we go. That is how you do a score. I am so good at this game. <laughs> this video is going to be about teams, which is a feature that Roblox has provided to us that we are going to be using inside of this video. And I think it's important to understand why teams are useful to add inside of your Roblox game. But before we start implementing, let me show you um, what teams are and how we can use them inside of our Roblox game. All right. Let's think about this for a minute. Before we start adding teams inside of Roblox Studio, I, I first want to briefly explain what teams actually are and how they serve a purpose for uh, Roblox. So I hope you understand the basic idea of what a team is. A team is basically when you group a bunch of people together to achieve the same goal or a similar goal, or you can also think of it as a faction as well among specific groups of people. So in this case, with this soccer field here, we have three players on this side and we have three players on this side. The goal for these three players that are grouped together is to move this ball towards this goal over here. And the goal for these players is to move this ball over to this goal. So each group of players or people have the same goal that they're trying to accomplish. And this can basically be said about any team or group of people trying to achieve the same goal um, as a whole. So with that basic understanding of teams, Roblox has provided us a feature to allow us to add these teams inside of our games. So if we have teams, then we can differentiate these players from one another. So this ties back into Roblox because they actually have a built-in feature that allows us to add teams inside of our own game. And that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do inside of this video. So with that being said, let's now go ahead and go straight into implementing. Now that we understand it, let's implement teams inside of Roblox Studio. So there's going to be a new service that I'm going to introduce to you inside of this video, and it's also going to be lied in the Explorer. And that, ex and that is called Teams that's going to be down here. So this is the service we're going to use to add teams to our own game. And the way we're going to do that is by going to the right side, hitting the plus sign, and we're going to insert a team like this. So now we have our first team inside of the Teams uh, folder inside of the Explorer. So if we click on it, then there's a few properties here that we can work with that are unique to a team. So the first property is called auto assignable, which is basically a property that, that tells Roblox if we want the player to automatically be assigned to this team if we join into the game. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. If we go to test and we go to play, then what we should see is Roblox is going to add us to the team. And the way we can see that is by going on the top right on our leaderboard, we can see that our username is placed right underneath the team that we just created. And so by default, it's this white-ish team with the name simply team. So we can customize this further uh, if we go back into Roblox Studio. So let's hit stop. And what we can do is rename this team to something different. We can call this, uh, let's say green team like this. And the reason I'm gonna say green team is because this is what's going to show the next property, which is team color. And if we were to click on this team color, then we can pick any one of these colors to be the color of our team. So I'm just gonna pick lime green for this example. So now what's going to happen is if we go into the game, then we can see again on the top right of the screen that um, our color of the color of the team changed and also the name of the team changed to green team. So that is basically what we wanted to see from here. Now, another thing is if we add more teams, so if we, let's say, duplicate this, so we're gonna right click and duplicate it, and we call this one the blue team, and we change the team color to, let's say, um, this color, cyan. If we go into the game again, hit play, then what's going to happen is Roblox is going to randomly put us either in the green team or the blue team. And now there's also two different teams inside of the leaderboard because we've added multiple teams. And you can basically do this for as many teams as you want. I don't know if there's a limit to how many teams you can have inside of a Roblox game, but you can definitely have a lot of teams, that's for sure. Now, how does Roblox determine which team to put you in if we have multiple auto assignable properties checked, since now we have green team and blue team checked? Well, basically what Roblox does is when we join into the game, 
Roblox is going to put us in the most convenient team first before putting us in the other team to make it balanced. So what I'm talking about is if we join to the game, Roblox is most likely going to put us inside of the green team first if there's no players in there. But if there's one player inside of the green team and no players inside of the blue team, then Roblox is going to put me inside of the blue team as soon as I join into the game just to keep the teams balanced, if that makes sense. So if I go into the game and I keep uh, trying to refresh my character, then it's always going to put me inside of the green team. But if another player joined into the game, then they would probably be placed inside of the blue team instead, just to keep the game balanced that way. Now, if you were to uncheck auto-assignable for one of these teams, then Roblox will not put you inside of this team automatically if you join into the game, and it's going to be up to you as the developer to manually put these players inside of the blue team through scripting, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a little bit. But that's how you essentially add teams inside of Roblox Studio. Okay, now there's an interesting concept I want you to understand, and that is the use of spawn locations with teams. Now. I want you to understand this. Before I introduce teams to you, basically all players were inside of a neutral team or basically just no team at all. So if we were to play the game, then all players were basically considered to be neutral because they were not tied to any specific team inside of the game. And because of this, we have what's called a spawn location here, which is essentially a part that allows players to spawn on top of when they join into the game or if they reset their character. So this spawn location acts as a neutral spawn location where there's no team tied to it specifically. So if we were to join into the game, we're always going to be spawning on this spawn location no matter what. But what's interesting is now that we have teams, we can have multiple different spawn locations that are specific to uh, the teams that we've just created. So if a player was inside of the blue team and this was, let's say, the blue team's um, spawn location, then all players that are in the blue team will respawn on this spawn location right here rather than this one or this one. And so right now I'm gonna be showing you how to create different spawn locations for different teams. So what I'm going to do is take the spawn location and I'm going to hit control D to duplicate it and then I'm going to move it alongside this way. Now with this spawn location, what we can do is set a team for this specific spawn location. In this case, we can do the green team. So what I'm going to do is change the brick color to lime green. And I'm also going to scroll all the way down to this property called team color. And I'm going to change this to lime green. Now it's very important to understand the difference between team color and brick color. So brick color and color, they basically are the same property. Um, if you change this, then it changes the visual representation of the spawn location. But that's not going to be enough to actually make it functional to be the lime green spawn location team. We also need to go down here to change the team color property so that we know that this green team matches with this spawn location right here. So that's something important that you must do and to understand the difference of. Um, but now if we go down here, there's more properties that we can actually work with. Uh, like force field duration, allow team change on touch, I believe that's what this is called, and neutral. So what I'm actually going to do is go back to our original spawn location, and I'm going to uncheck neutral, and I'm going to go back to this spawn location, and I'm going to uncheck neutral as well. Neutral basically means um, if a spawn location is going to be the default spawn location that uh, every player must uh, spawn as, uh, whether they join into the game for the first time or if they reset their character. And since we now have teams, we don't want this to be the case because if we are now inside of the green team and we want to spawn inside of this one, then we need to uncheck neutral for both of them. And so now we have a basic setup going here. So if we hit play, then what should happen is we're automatically going to be put inside of the green team and we're going to spawn on top of the green team pad rather than this neutral pad right here that doesn't serve any purpose other than uh, bringing in neutral players inside of the game. So if I reset my character, then I should still be able to spawn on top of this green uh, spawn location rather than this one. So it is basically working as expected. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this again and move it alongside this way. So this one is going to be cyan instead of lime green. So I'm going to change the brick color to cyan and I'm going to go down here and change the team color to cyan as well. But this time what I'm going to do is check this property called allow team change on touch. 
So if we do this, then what's going to happen is if we step on the spawn location, then it's going to change our current team to this uh, team instead. So if we hit play again, then we should be spawning on top of the green spawn location. And so if I now touch this spawn location, then it's going to change my team. It's going to say in the chat that you are now on the blue team um, instead of the green team. So if I go and reset my character, then what should happen is I should be spawned on top of this spawn location rather than, th than this one. And because I don't have the allow team change on touch property enabled for this one, I can't go back to the green team. And so that's like additional functionality that I can introduce to you. But before we move on to the next thing, there's one more property here called force field duration. Now, basically what a force field is, is if we spawn in into the game or if we reset our character, there's a period of time where we are immune to any sort of damage whatsoever. And this is being represented through a visual force field that I'm actually going to show you. So in order to do that, we need to change this duration property to something that's bigger than zero. So in this case, let's make it uh, five, let's say. So let's now go into the game and hit play. And what should happen is if we join into the game, then there should be no, no force field. That's because we have to go on the blue team and then reset our character. So what we should see from this is a visual force field like this. We can't take any damage while we're inside of this force field. And then after five seconds, it's going to be destroyed. So that's basically a force field object that uh, is contained within our character. And you can actually um, utilize force fields inside of your own game if you want to, let's say, have a period of time where you don't want the player to be immune, where you want the player to be immune to any damage. So that's like an additional thing right there. Okay, now I want you to understand the difference between team and team color. So when we've been working with creating teams, like on the right side, we have the green team and the blue team. So the team itself is this team object right here, but the team color is simply just a brick color that is labeled as a team color property. Now, if you were to, let's say, utilize this inside of your Roblox game, where you wanted to change a player's team to be this team, then you would basically just change the player's team to the green team. You wouldn't necessarily change the team color of the player with the team color of a different team. It's usually better to just change the team of the player to the team object that is contained inside of teams. And it can be confusing to use team color for your scripts if you're trying to change the team color of a player to a different team color versus if you were to change the team of a player to a specific team inside of teams. So I recommend changing the team of the player versus the team color of the player to a different one. So now I'm gonna show you what this looks like through a script. So I'm going to stop right here. And what I'm going to do is go on the right side of server script service. I'm gonna uh, hit the plus sign and insert a script. So what we're going to do first is make reference to the team's service. What we're going to do is say local teams equals game colon get service teams. And it's just simply going to be this. And next thing we're going to do is let's say what we want to do for the script is manually change the team to the blue team as soon as we join into the game. So what we're going to do is make reference to the blue team. We're going to say local blue team equals teams dot blue team like this. So as soon as we join into the game, what's going to happen is we're going to be set as the green team. But what we want to do is set the team to the blue team uh, after like a little bit of time. So what we can do is add a task dot wait for about two seconds. And what we're going to do is make a player added event. So what we're going to do is say game dot players dot player added connect function open close parentheses player and then we're gonna hit enter so i'm actually going to move task.wait down here inside of the player added event instead so now what we're going to do is say player dot team equals blue team like this so now if we go into the game and hit play we should start in the green team, but then after about two seconds, we should see that we have now manually been moved to the blue team from the script. And we did not change the team color, but instead we changed the team itself because it's generally a better practice to change the team versus the team color. We can implement a few basic things with teams now that we have this inside of our game. And the first one we can do is create a team only door, which should be pretty easy. So basically a door that opens up only if you are in a specific team that no other players in a different team can access. So what we can do is create a part inside of model 
And I'm just gonna scale this up just a little bit like this. And then I'm gonna go down here, make anchored equal to true. And I'm now going to insert a script inside of this part like this. So the first thing we're going to do is make reference to the door. So we're gonna say local door equals script dot parent. And we're also going to make a debounce variable so that um, we're not touching this door repeatedly. Uh, we only need to touch it once uh, before having a cooldown. So what we're gonna do is say local touched equals false. And then we're also going to um, add a, a door touched event by saying door dot touched colon connect function open and close parentheses hit. Uh, and then we're going to say enter. And now what we're gonna do is make reference to the humanoid. We're gonna say local humanoid equals hit dot parent colon find first child open and close parentheses humanoid. And then we're also gonna locate if this is a player. So we're gonna say local player equals game dot players colon get player from character like this. And then we're gonna pass the reference as hit dot parent. And then we're going to check if humanoid exists and if the player exists and if touched is not true. So we're going to say and not touched. And finally, we have to do one more check, which is to see if the player's team is a specific team. So what we're going to do is so what we're going to do is say player. Oh, wait. So what we're going to do is say and player dot team equals and if we want to reference a specific team, we can also do that directly inside of the teams folder inside of Explorer. So what we can do is say game dot teams dot let's say blue team. Then we're going to hit enter. What we're going to do is say touched equals true. And then we're also going to add a task dot wait for about, uh, let's say three seconds. And then we're going to say touched is back equal to false so that we can touch it again. And to make this door functional, what we're going to do is set the doors transparency equal to 0.5. So it's half transparent. And then we're also going to set the doors can collide equal to false so that players can walk through that door. So I'm going to copy this uh, and then paste it down here. This is going to be set equal to zero. And then the can collide is going to be set equal to true so that the door is back to its original state where you can't go through the door. So this is the basic setup of, so this is basically how we create a team only door. So now if we go into the game, hit test and hit play, then what should happen is we're going to be set to the blue team after about two seconds like this. So we should be able to access this door. So let's go through the door. And just like that, we can access the door and we can go um, back out the way we came from. So if we were to go back to the script and change this to the green team, then we're not gonna be able to go through the store because we're going to be on the blue team instead of the green team. So as you can see, we cannot go through the store because we are not in the same team. Now, technically with this script, if you had one person who was inside of the green, if you had one person who was inside of the blue team that went through the store, then every single player behind him would be able to go through the store as well. So you would have to utilize some sort of um, local functionality onto this as well so that only that specific player can go through the door. But I'm not going to be implementing that inside of this episode. This is like a basic example that I can come up with uh, when it comes to using teams inside of Roblox Studio. So there's another good use case of using teams inside of Roblox Studio, and that is the ability to have friendly fire turned off. And basically what friendly fire is, is if a if is if two players are in the same team, then they should pretty much not be able to kill each other or hurt each other. Um, but instead, they have the ability to hurt the other team if they were playing a competitive game of, let's say, sword fighting. I'm going to show you an example of this being used inside of Roblox's classic sword uh, tool that is created by Roblox that you can find inside of the toolbox. So inside of the sword script, there should be this function here called is teammate that takes in two players. So player one and player two. So it's first going to check if player one and player two exists. And we're also going to check if player one is not in a neutral state and they are in a team. And then finally, they check if the player one's team color is equal to the player two's team color. Now, what I would recommend is changing um, the, now what I would recommend is comparing the player's team versus the player's team color, just because it's easier to distinguish from one another, but you could use either one of those two. I just recommend teams. And so this function is being called down here 
by basically checking if the player that this player is trying to hit is a teammate, then we're just simply going to return this function and we're not going to make the humanoid and we're not going to make the player take damage because of it. And so that is a basic check you can do to see if you want to hit or if you want to hurt your own teammate, which in this case, we don't want to. So we determine that using their team color or team property. So for today's challenge, I want you to try and recreate this team selection system as soon as you join into the game for the first time. So basically, there's two options here. There's the green button and then there's the blue button that represents the team that I can spawn into. So right now I'm in the blue team and if I select the green team, then it's going to get rid of the GUI for the selection for the team selection and it also placed me on top of the green team spawn location inside of the game. And this is pretty much done with, as you can see on the right side, I have a screen GUI, a local script, a frame with the two buttons. And I'm also using a remote of, and I'm also using a remote event to tell the server to change my player's team if I do click on one of these buttons. So uh, we're gonna get into implementing in just a little bit, but I want you to try this for yourself first before we get into implementing this inside of Roblox Studio, at least just the scripts. So try this out on your own first, and now let's get into implementing. Okay, so what I have going on here is a screen GUI that has ignored GUI inset turned on so that there is not like some weird extra space on the top of the screen. And we also have a frame that basically covers the entire screen um, with two buttons, blue and green. And so what I'm going to do now is create the scripts needed in order to make this functional. So I also made a remote event inside of replicated storage as well to represent the change team when we click on one of these buttons. So what I'm going to do first is insert a local script inside of the screen GUI. So I'm going to insert a local script like this. First thing I'm going to do is reference the GUI by saying local GUI equals script.parent. And then we're going to make reference to the two buttons. So we're going to say local green button equals GUI.frame.green. And then we're going to make reference to the blue button by saying blue button equals GUI.frame.blue like this. And now we're going to create a mouse button one click event for each of these buttons. We're going to say green button dot mouse button one click connect function open and close parentheses enter like this. And now what we're going to do is make reference to our change team re remote event. So we're gonna say local change team equals game dot replicated storage colon wait for child and then change team just like this. So now what we're gonna do is say change team colon fire server open and close parentheses. And what we're going to pass into here is the name of the team that's inside of the teams um, that's inside of our team's folder right here. So what we're going to do is in quotations, we're going to say green team and make sure the name matches as well. Um, and another thing we're going to do is make the GUI disabled as soon as we press the button so that we, we don't have to press it again. So what we're gonna do is say GUI dot enabled equals false. And one quick thing to note is make sure you have reset on spawn turned off. So if we were to, let's say, reload our character, then it's not going to show the GUI again after that. So now what we're going to do is uh, highlight all of this, and then we're going to drop two lines, and then we're going to replace this with the blue button. And the string we're going to pass in is the blue team uh, name. So now what we can do is go to the server script service, insert another script. We're going to call this script um, change team just like this. So what we're going to do first is uh, go back to our local script, make reference to the change team remote event by just copying this one line, pasting it like this. And now what we're going to do is say change team dot on server event colon connect function open and close parentheses. So the first thing that's passed is always going to be the player. The next thing is going to be the name of the team, which is the first argument we passed. So this is going to be the team name. We're going to hit enter like this. And so what we're now going to do is basically set the player's team to the team name inside of teams. So what we're going to do is say local team equals game dot teams colon find first child open and close parentheses team name. So if we got the right name for the team, whether that's the green team or the blue team, we're going to find it inside of here. Next, we're going to say if team then 
player.team equals team. And it should basically be as simple as this. But another thing we want to do is rather than just setting the team to the new team, we also want to refresh the player's character so that they spawn on top of the spawn location. And there's a really easy command for this. And that is going to be player colon load character. So basically, um, we are getting rid of the current character and we're resetting it. So they're respawning essentially. So that's what load character does. So they're going to respawn on top of the new spawn location associated with the, with the new team that they're in. So that is the basic rundown of this uh, team selection system that we have here. So if we go hit test, hit play, then what we should see inside of the game is uh, the, the screen to show which team we want to be placed in. And if I hit blue team, then it's going to put me inside the blue team, but I was already in the blue team, but it also refreshed my characters so that I can now spawn on top of this um, spawn location. So I hope this tutorial has given you some insight as to how you can implement teams inside of Roblox Studio. But if you want to learn another important concept that Roblox has that I think ties into teams is tools, which I'll have for you right here. So go and watch that video right now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.